there's no way if we're always speeding along and there's always a sense of got to do more and there's no sense of space right here, no open-ended space, um, there's no way we can really contact others in a deep way. We're not there for the contact. I can't tell you how many parents have talked to me about regretting how they raced through the years with their children growing up, you know, or how many people I've had come and say, you know, um, that have been in a long relationship saying, I think it's too late, I think the relationship kind of died on the vine, you know, it, we just didn't give it the attention. Because intimacy takes paying attention. We have to nurture and nourish our relationships. Doesn't happen when there's no space. When we're speeding along, we can't see who's here. We're in our human doing spacesuit. You know, I talk about the spacesuit self. And what we see in others is the mass. We don't see who's under there. It says one woman went into a meeting. Uh, was being held and she let the folks in the meeting know that there was a clown outside. And one man asked, well, was it a real clown or just a person dressed up as a clown? <laughs> I think that's a sleeper. <laughs> but we know what it's like when we're, when we're hurrying around and rushing. We see two-dimensional beings. We really see just the presentation and we don't see who's there. And when we're looking that way at others, we forget what matters to people. You know, just the way our life matters to us and we're afraid of many things, we live with fear and we have a longing for, for feeling safe and feeling connection, we forget that others are living with that too. So I'm describing some of the uh, ways that, the kind of wake-ups. I think another a really deep wake-up is that, and I have this happen a lot, people saying, I just, you know, I'll do a metta or loving-kindness practice or something, they'll say, you know, I just feel like my heart is a chronically closed heart. You know, I, I, I believe in love, but I, there's not a real visceral sense of aliveness in that just the way we talk about compassion, but how often does our heart really feel that tenderness of really caring? Many of you might remember the example of the Good Samaritan study at Princeton, which I think is so interesting that the seminarians were given two different uh, possible uh, stories to study. One was a Good Samaritan study and the other was a random Bible study. And the job was they were supposed to study and then go into another building and give a sermon on whatever they were studying. But on the way to the other building where they're supposed to give their sermon, they were going to pass in a person in a doorway who was moaning in distress. Now, the question for the study was, you know, whether the seminarians would stop to help. And what they found out was that that was determined by how much time they felt they had before they had to give a sermon. And for those that felt like they didn't have very much time before they were due to give the sermon, they went right by the guy moaning in distress. And it didn't matter that they were giving a sermon on the Good Samaritan story. I think that's really interesting. We are, our nervous system is deeply affected by a sense of not enough time. It sets off the sympathetic nervous system, fight, flight, and fight, flight, our hearts get tight, our limbs get a lot of blood, we're meant to run and move and so on. It's not the time we feel compassion. Mm -hmm.